Hello and welcome to episode 7 of the Livewire Gaming Show. This week we are going to draft our Pokemon teams, as in the mainline games. We're going to do 6 Pokemon each and we'll go through the little rules we've set for ourselves before we start. We're going to catch up with each other because we actually haven't really spoken a lot this week and then we're going to go through our pet peeves and hates in gaming and nerd culture in general. Um... I said that my two pet pet peeves are right in front of me. So, how are my two pet peeves? How are you doing? I'd just like to throw a flag on the field about that Pokemon did comment. You, <laughs> did you, you see can't... they have that in Destiny as an emote flag on the play? It's great. No. A anytime no, someone did something wrong in the raid on Tuesday, I threw a flag on the play. No one got the yeah. reference. I anyway. was just commenting how we couldn't make our own Pokemon. Fuck's sake. I've been out here for six hours trying to create combinations. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been up to this week? Dylan, what have you been doing? Um, I, I only asked him that because he's just trying to take a sip of his drink and I wanted yeah. to be a dickhead. <laughs> These are pricks. I'm just going to make it go longer now and take another sip. <laughs> um, yeah, this week, what have I been up to? I don't know, man. The weeks feel so much longer now. It's not even funny. It's literally every time we sit down to watch like one division, I'm like, holy shit, that was last Friday, which felt like a month ago. They're really um, long, but really quick. It's weird. It's so weird. What have I been in? Nothing really. Just been playing Apex and WoW. Uh, played a bit of Destiny. Yeah. Um, trying to get my gilded dredging seal. You were part of that experience, Kev. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's been pretty quiet. Been playing, actually, sorry. A bit of Phoenix Rising on the Switch. I've unlocked all four gods now, so I'm literally on the boss, big boss man. So I'm just trying to take my time in that, just do area to area. Other than that, it's been pretty much me this week. Steven, what have you been up to? I went back to Phoenix Rising as well. I've cleared the second god, um, which was clucking good fun. Um, Aries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah like it it's really enjoyable but i i don't know about you deal but you know those stupid 100 arm yes yes I, they're, they're so all... fucking hard yeah they're, they're just a pain in the hole and now i'm starting to realize that enemies are like blue and purple to represent difficulty yeah i'm like i'm not comfortable fighting blue stuff yet so. But even with those guys, there's no reward for fighting them. Like, you know, in the early game when you were fighting, like, the Cyclopses and stuff, you actually got a chest at the other side of it, which it could be, like, just a piece of armor. Um, or even if it's, like, a thousand gems or something like that. But with those guys, it just feels like you're there for about 10 to 15 minutes. And he's just like, right, what do I get? No, nothing. I just use the bomb my stamina potions. <laughs> I need to play this game because I'm totally out of the loop. And also, so look, it looked beautiful, to be fair, as well. Yeah. It's Actually, do you know what I discovered it has as well, Stephen, this week? Fucking transmog. Yeah. <laughs> so when you go into the menu and you have your armors, and obviously each one will give you, like, the one that I wear is 275% extra health when your health bar is full. So if you press X on that or whatever your customize is, you can basically select all the armor that you've unlocked to use it as a, a shell. Yeah, so, they yeah. tell you that. I did not know that, and I was like, oh my god! I was trying to explain to Cathy what Transmog was, and she had a clue, and I was like, you'll get it, you'll get it, it's okay. But yeah. yeah, yeah, great. Did you make a boy or a girl, Phoenix? I made a boy, and she's a girl. So, we're both playing it simultaneously. Oh, I'm a boy sorry! And a girl. <laughs> yeah. what? The way you, you know, said that, it was like, I made a boy, but she's a girl. I was like, huh? So you, you made gender dwarf into your character. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I made a guy anyway. So that's been my playthrough experience from a, a boy's uh, point of view. That's amazing. Um, so yeah, so Sorry, just before we continue going, Stephen, just quickly, if you can go into your voice and video settings on Discord and just lower the decibel threshold like ever so slightly, just drag it to the left, but just by three or four, just you're cutting out a little bit. Um, it wasn't set to that's automatic. Perfect. That's perfect. No, I never set it to automatic. Uh, no, it's automatic now. But remember, with the streaming, I had to change it. No, that's in. all right. You were just you were clipping out the start of sentences. That's all. Sorry. Continue. No, no. And then uh, other than Phoenix Rising, um, just fucking life in general, as you said, like there's been a lot of week in this week, and 
They're all Bully, willing to bullying be. students. Bullying students, yes, that is a favorite pastime of mine. Bullying I've seen students. The Reddit thread. <laughs> <laughs> Longer's coming soon, but uh, oh, that that's been my week. How's yours, Kev? Um, yeah, it's, as Dil was saying, the weeks are long, but like they're very short. It's we're just like. My manager on work made a comment today about, oh, we, we, it feels like we've lost, I've just lost this week, the last few days, I've just, have gone by, and I'm like, a week? I'll raise you a fucking year! <laughs> Where's the last year gone? So it's just like, everything is just mashed into one. But, um, this week, played Destiny, still grinding out that 30 and 10 levels for GM. Grandmaster Nightfall's coming next Tuesday. Um, I'm leveled enough, so should be fine. I'm missing literally one bit. It's like Forever 29. I'm missing an arm. Everything else is 30 and 10. Other than that, I watch... What did I watch? Oh, I start watching Banshee again. Because I never finished it. Not watch it. It's, um, it's a Cinemax thing, so it's very violent and very... Yeah. It's alright. Basically, it's like... Guy gets out of jail and goes... Moves to this, like ass end of nowhere town in the middle of america and it's like an amish town and it's but basically he's going there because his girlfriend from before he went to jail lives there and has a family and it yeah he basically gets gets to the town this town called banshee and kills the sh the new sheriff arrives on the same day and he kills the sheriff no that's not true actually i'm lying already the sheriff gets killed and he takes up the position of sheriff instead because he wants to be near this woman that he loves and then it, it's good i just i i start watching it years ago um but i never finished it so I, i'm watching from the start to finish the to watch that third and a fourth season that i just never watched back in the day but yeah it's fine you know um the boys yeah yeah what do you know? What's the main villain? Homelander. Name? Homelander. Homelander is the main is the lead actor in Banshee. So oh, Anthony okay. Anthony Starr is Lucas Hood in Banshee. It's fun. It's good. It's enjoyable. But I'm just watching in the background while doing more Pokemon Go Battle League because I want to grind out to that level twenty, which I'm getting there. Lots of Stardust and lots of Charge TMs later. I'm getting there. Apart from that. Same as every week for the last 52 weeks. It's actually the one year anniversary. I've worked from home for me tomorrow. Tomorrow Dang. last year was my last day in work last year. So it's kind of wild. Right. So shall shall we move on? I don't think there's anything else. Yep, yeah. Go, go for it. Right. So as we said, we're going to draft our Pokemon teams. Um, I think the best way to do it is that we each take it one at a time and we each pick one Pokemon per time. Um, we haven't been too strict on rules with ourselves. I know I'm going to try pick Pokemon that neither of you two have picked, just to keep it a bit different. But the only rule really is we are only allowed to have one Legendary slash Mythical slash Ultra Beast per team, just so it doesn't end up being six Legendaries on everyone's team and it's boring but apart from that it's it's open field all generations involved you're re it's not we're not doing it for like pvp reasons or anything it's just literally building a team for ourselves for whatever reason we might like the color of a certain pokemon's eyes or some shit so i think the way we should maybe do it we haven't decided who's gonna go first so we have you are <laughs> okay that's fine so we can Work our way around if you want, then. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, so we're all in a different composition. So, like, on my screen, you're on top right. On my screen, right you're top Steven's left, Dylan. Yeah. I was going to say we could play Pokemon version of Rock, Paper, Scissors called Fire, Water, Grass. And whoever wins goes first. Or no, we just go first. But we could be there for two hours doing that. Right. I I'll go first, then. And I will come to... in with one of my favorites, seeing as I get to do it. Um, so my team, I'm going to try build a very balanced team across the different types. So I'll have a fire, a water, steel, fire. So I'll, have, I'll try and spread it out to have a well-balanced and rounded team. So my first one is a fighting steel type, Lucario. 
Um, nice. I love. I just don't know. I just Lucario be one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, just a badass, and he's got a cool he's, shiny. Yo, he's, well, I actually, the, I actually haven't seen his shiny. It's yellow. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's cool. So. Oh, it's in Pogo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The, it's one of the elusive shinies. Yeah, very elusive shinies. So, yeah. yeah. So my first one on my list will be the Karaokas. It's good, solid steel fighting type. Lots of um, match, good matchups. You got given him in the X and Y campaign, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. Actually. Yeah, it, it, to, like that was to me. That was my first kind of ever look at him. It was kind of yeah. like. On like the Did you get given a Raiulu or Lucario? I think it's a it's a Lucario because it's all about the megas, isn't it? Yes. And it may, yeah, you're yeah. doing the going to the tower and the Lucario takes a shine to you and it's the prince or the princess or something and then she gives it to you as he likes you and wants to go travelling and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. And then you get the Mega <laughs> Lucario or the the stone as well then. That's actually a good point. I didn't even think of that. It's also got a badass mega evolution as well. Yeah. Mega Lucario is really cool. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I think he's, right. just like, he's just like an all-around fan favorite as well. Yeah, he. I think he is a fan favorite. So yeah, I, yeah. I thought I was being original and really I wasn't. I was just being a... Basic bitch. Basic bitch. Yeah. Steven? Do you want to try? Dale oh, just wants to like, get us two out of the way so he can start battling against us now. Like, haha, my team's going to beat their team. Yeah, so I went with your coach, Kev, and I tried to um, match the best, the, as many types as I could, um, mm -hmm. but also put in Pokemon that I liked for that type. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, that, that's what I've tried to do as well. Yeah, exactly that. Same. So, unfortunately, my I'm going to go with your fighting type and show you my fighting type. Uh, and it's not a dual type, but it's the chap or the ch champ. Um, I thought you were going to say the chop. I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, Stephen uh, just chomp. likes guys with four arms. Yeah, think of all the dicks he can handle. Four. Get a clip on that, please. <laughs> you say that right? That's actually a joke I made the other day. Um, I can't remember. We were, it was me and Kelly were joking about something. A match champ came up, and I was like, "Ah, oh, Everton's doubled, two arms, four arms, one dick, two dicks." <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so well, yeah, I think you were commented on this <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think it might have been eavesdropping on us, Stephen. Might have been, yeah. No, but the reason I just think he's really cool. It, it's just that kind of concept of you've a bodybuilder fighting type who has four yeah. arms. Yep, awesome. Cool. Next time, you, if you when you play, um. The game comes out later this year. You're gonna have to call it Jules, and you'll get that reference, Stephen. Dylan hasn't got it for another three chapters. In Final oh, Fantasy. Still... Oh, okay. Yeah. Go on, Dale. What's yours? My first one is gonna be no surprise to you, Stephen. <laughs> Gialtion. Oh, I have it. I have a thing for the evolutions. There. Dale's just gonna favorite. have the six. It's evolutions, aren't you? That's what I was gonna do as a joke, but then I was like, nah, there's no point. No, I love I love the evolutions. Um they're they're always consistently good, like for the type that they are. Because like they're all out and out that specific type, like water, dark, psychic, fire, whatever, etc. Um and yeah, I just I love Jolteon. Jolteon's class. He's great in like a when Pokemon Go. He's just such a fast attacker, and in the main series games as well, I'll always try to grab a Thunderstone. Do you know what it is? Yeah. Is that they're solid, like they're not. Best, yeah, they're not best of class in in their types, so in good. Their types but they yeah. are. They're solid. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. that's. Yeah, so I tried to pick one from each generation. So that was my Gen One, for my first pick. One from each evolution. I think, for fuck's sake. <laughs> One of each evolution. It'd be a surprise though, because there'd be still two or three left out. <laughs> we're due a new, we're due a new one, but obviously yeah, it's we won't, we won't get it. Yeah, we won't get a new one in the remakes, obviously. But I imagine we will get a new evolution or two in the next generation. I'd like a fighting type. That'd be cool. Fighting type. Mm. Mm, Forearms. 
Body It'll just be something with a big forehead for head button mm-hmm. things. <laughs> but yeah, right. Take us to your number two, Kev. Okay, so my number two is a fire flying type. It's again one of my favorite Pokemon. It's got a fantastic shiny. Um, we actually had a Pokemon Go community day quite recently for its basic evolution. So my second choice is Talonflame. And that's going to be my really? fire choice. I, I don't know what oh. it is. I love Talonflame. Like, um, I normally love the, th- the third evolution of birds. Mm. Like, the, you know that, that the first kind of first bird you meet in the main series games yes i i, I don't know it, it's yeah it's it's just not one of the ones that kind of shines for me but obviously it's personal yeah. i believe it's personal bitch <laughs> no <laughs> i'm just, just i'm a fan of talent i don't know it's it's the fire flying type it's yeah like, it's a fire pidgey up basically yeah um so it's it i have it I've, i had it in my team in sword shield most of the way through still there now because i got a shiny one from a totally legitimate max raid den. max raid um yes yeah, that's it's nice i guess shiny nice shiny nice so that, that obviously means that i'm not going with no gen one fire type flying type fire flying leaving yes, it open for some leaving it open for horror. someone else <laughs> leaving it open for someone else to take it steven so my um fire type is <laughs> a fire dragon type not from okay. gem and it's going to be using my legendary slot oh. and it's rest- ah. because of all the legendaries i think reshiram just has Re- reshiram and um zekrom uh, zekrom just have the coolest dragon legendary looks they just look so yeah. cool. They just look like what you think an OP Pokemon would be, and um, yeah, that's fair. Between the two, I, the white of uh, Reshiram just kind of does it for me. So um, that would be my fire type. So the fire dragon is Reshiram for me. Yeah, they do actually look like your generic stereotypical dragon, actually, don't they? The way yeah. that, like, you know, when you see some dragon types and it's a fucking apple, and you're kind of like, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look like a dragon. And then you have. Something that looks like a dragon in the generation one that isn't the dragon. <laughs> yeah, it's not a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's I've, a good one. and you I, use I've your legendary left. card so soon. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm leaving my legendary to the last. Same. Because then I, I can see what. Well, I'll see what Steven's taking. I don't know what Dale's gonna take, but I also, in case one of my Pokemon got taken, I don't want to have. The type matchups and off. Okay, so Reshiram's in there. Steven getting in early with his legendary. Right, yeah, Dale. He's like, fuck you guys. All right, so my next one is from Gen 2. It is a steel a bug type, and I it, know is what it is Sizer. Oh, I did yeah. know it. Did it? Oh, okay. No, I, I yeah. had it wrong. Now, uh, Sizer. Uh, I, I love the design of Sizer. His, his look is just like... I, I remember when I first saw him, I always assumed that he was a fighting type because mm. he has that kind of stature and composition. But um, He's no, a I love humanoid his design. form. Yeah. Um, his mega design is so good as well. Or mega evolution. And it's um, a cool shiny. And it was the first kind of bug type because you know the way you always overlook the bug types because they're generally kind of cannon fodder um apart from heracross but um that's who yeah. i thought you were i thought you were gonna say heracross but that's, it was a toss up that's but a fighting I do. bug type not fighting steel it's fight- so yeah bug steel sorry and it's shiny is really cool as well it's like heracross a, is shiny a bright class, green yeah. oh scissor or, yeah scissor yeah, yeah or scissor i can now i never actually knew its name but i always call it Sizer. so someone on youtube will tell us we're wrong so it's fine yeah or not that's my boy it's a nice one I that was like... one of my backups in case uh, Lucario got taken. It was Lucario, then Heracross, then Cesar. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was one of my fighting type backups. All right, I'll, I'll keep moving down my list. Um, the dark, dark type that I wanted. I, I, it was mm-hmm. a toss up between three. One of them being an evolution, just because it's such. So it's just a tank. And it's got a really nice shiny. It's not a mega change shiny, but it's 
subtle and it, it Sick, makes it simple. really nice. Yeah. So I'm going to eeny, meeny, miny, mow it and not tr choose Tyranitar. And I'm going to go with Zoroark instead. Okay. Um, yeah. Which is a... It's it's straight up just a dark type. It's just a really cool looking Pokemon, I think. And it's also got a really, really nice shiny. And a really nice mullet. And a really nice mullet. <laughs> but the shiny version has a really cool mullet. Yeah. I think of um, one or two of them on my switch yeah totally <laughs> legitimate from a totally legitimate yeah. raid den yeah from me too Zeruas. yeah me too as our wax really cool i think that just it was the generation that i skip you know it was one of those that kind of fell by yeah if that came along in gen five i think yeah yeah which would have been black and white right yeah that's when I would have started. That's when, I, so I kind of skipped. Funnily enough, the one, the so when I was doing up, I said it before that we started that the generation I had the most Pokemon in was Gen Four, which is the remakes hmm. from Dish that are coming out at the end of the year. But that would have been where I fell off playing the games when I was a kid. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that the one that I have the most favorite Pokemon from is the generation that I skipped, but black and white was where I started to get back into it again up, as a teenager. Yeah. That was kind of like, ah, oh, a bit of money and I can afford to get more than one games console. Yay. And Nintendo DSs were dirt cheap when you got them pre-owned. <laughs> yep. So cheap. Um, so then to try and match up with your dark type. So my, it's not a primary dark I'm type. Stop you, me, Stephen. I'm I'm trying to just keep in with teams here. That's all. <laughs> Still doing one thing. And that's okay. <clears throat> yeah, fuck yeah. you guys. Over picking wrong types. So my one is a water dark type. Um, okay. Water dark. I'm trying to think what gen it's from again. Um, I don't remember. Oh, Jesus. Water dark is it? I can't guess that actually. Oh, it's Generation Six. That's the one it's from. It's uh, Greninja. Ah, okay. Another uh, fan favorite. Another fan he, favorite. Yeah. He's so cool looking. Like he is. I, I haven't watched the Pokemon anime in a long, long time. I remember seeing it recently enough, and they just had Greninja, and it's just his animations, and he just he just looks so cool. Like he's an agile ninja frog. Like yeah. Orange one from Pokemon just mad. <laughs> like ninja frog. So that that's mine, water dark type. I love that he has like the I could never actually realise if it was ever like his tongue or just like a scarf <laughs> or like a kind of mouth guard that was going around his neck. Self appreciation by his tongue, you know. Yeah. Or like a flotation device. But yeah, no, he's really cool. I think he was the he was like the first episode of that series, wasn't he? It was like he was, yeah. if I remember correctly. I only started watching that like last year or something as well. But yeah, in the it's... even in the main series TV shows, he was like the kind of center focus of a lot of it, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Right, uh, my next one is. A psychic type. Just to fucking go completely separate to what you guys are doing. I just don't want to fuck up my order. <laughs> uh, I, I, do you know what? I fucked up my order from my first pick. So, my one is another... I just purely like the design. And I always call it a her. Because it's Gardevoir. Gardevoir. Well, there goes one of my picks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um... Yeah, it was Gardevoir Gallade, but I went to a Gardevoir. Um, yeah, it's just it's another kind of popular main series. Um, it's very strong pick, as well. Psychic, but fairy, it's psychic so strong. Fairy type. Yeah. And especially having that fairy type as well um, kind of amplifies it that much more. Yeah. Next, it's like, I know for me, they've never been a strong contender to be in my, my group, but... Um, having that dual typing kind of really helps. It bumps it up massively, especially in fights as well. Um, 
Yeah. 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 Cosplay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. He just reminds me of Dado in 2B. And by I the way, yeah, Gardevoir, Gardevoir is a she anyway. It's canon. Is, it's a female, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because I can't remember who it is, but someone in the main anime has one as their partner and you, you're questing with them for a bit of it. And yeah, it's. I think that's where I was just associated with being a, a female. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, I had Gardevoir in as my uh, as one of my as my first choice for a fairy psychic slot, so I'm gonna change that one up. Um, my second choice in the psych in the fairy slot was Sylveon, but I've just realised I don't want to do that, and I'm gonna go with a Alolan Nine Tails instead, because really? it flips up that fire type and changes it to a ice fairy type, and yeah. it's a beast and it's a beautiful looking pokemon changing that cream I mean, of the gen one or have the canto version to the, the white yeah, it's it's a nice pokemon that's i think it is one of the nicest changes in yeah. the alolan forms yeah i had both rapidash Galar galarian rapidash and um alolan nine tails there th uh, to be picked but i think i'll go with the alolan nine tails because it's, it's i still nice. get confused on their new types with the Galarian forms and the mm. Alolan forms, especially with uh, Stunfisk. <laughs> Stunfisk. He was he was big in GBL for a while. Mm. He still is. He's still a beast in is he? Go Battle League. Yeah. Also, the the shiny for the Alolan Nine Tails is also quite nice. I haven't seen it actually. It doesn't Isn't change it? it a whole lot, but it, it it's a subtle change. It's nice. Okay. Mm. Pity nice. they didn't go hard on it and just change it to like black and with the light blue going through it would have been really would have made it really cool looking. Yeah. Steven, take us away. You obviously have to stick with an ice or a fairy type now. <laughs> In my uh, fairy type slot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I I think you can correct me this, I think this is just pure fairy. Um and it's just purely because of just how mental it looks, is uh, Togekiss. Togekiss. And mm. strong. the idea from tiny little Togepi to this mm -hmm. weird pancake style thing. It looks like a chip from Destiny. Okay. Like, that's where it evolves. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, does, it does look like a strange design from where it originated from as well. Yeah. This cute little, like... Especially Hash. Togetic, because Togetic is kind of just like a, an elongated Togepi. With yeah. longer arms, or wings. Yeah, it's extremely it's strong. One, it's one of those tanks, isn't it? In Ultra League or Master League, yeah, it's very, very strong. Because it's got that, it's, du very... it's dual typing again, and it can, all, it can also have flamethrower and stuff. What is it, edge, normal so. fairy, is it? Flying fairy, I think. Flying fairy. Flying fairy. Okay. It can also have. But that's the thing with it can take types. flamethrower. It can take um, rock slide or stone edge, one or the other. So it, it gives it that good class matchup dynamic or type matchup. To be that's good. my. I, I as much as like we just shout on his design, I actually do like the way it looks. Mm. It is really cool. I just think, and then the shiny just looks off color. Yeah. It's like it's been washed one too many times and you didn't put a colour catcher in with it. <laughs> okay. My next one is I remember I first picked it, picked one up in Sun and Moon that generation's playthrough and I was I like that generation. Did, see did, that was kind of <laughs> like my reignition into the franchise again. Yeah. Um, so I was just annoyed the hell out of me. Your ha ha rival I was buddy. Just fucking so oh, like that's going into the pet peeves category. <laughs> actually, I actually am gonna save that for pet peeves because that's a serious pet peeve I've developed over the last few generations of Pokemon. Sorry, Dill, I'm tangenting yourself. No, you're here. good. Um, yeah. So this guy, I picked him up very early on in my son playthrough, and because I missed on so many generations previous, I just assumed that he was in New Gen Seven, uh -huh. but he wasn't. He is Hawlucha. And he is my flying fighting type, and I loved every boss or every gym I came to. He just decimated fucking everybody. 
He'd also decimate the mill tank from Gen 2. So, yeah, I loved Hollywood. And uh, he, he, his design is so nice. It's like a, the kind of Mexican wrestler look. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really oh. cool. Uh, yeah. And in the anime as well, he has a really good story. He's like the kind of protector. Oh, yeah. Of the... Ash has one, hasn't he? Yeah. Mm. He comes on his journey. Um, yeah, he's like a protector against the fucking the bully Machamp and fucking Conkeldor. Or... Yeah, no, I really, really like Hollyja, so he fit into my uh, my fighting flying slot. Nice. Yeah, I'm finally gonna, I think, dip into Generation One and be a Gen Oneer for a minute here. Um, I mean, is it really a Pokemon team if you don't have a dragon in there? And mm. you're gonna go with the the thick orange boy that should have been blue, and throw in a Dragonite. I think I had the Garchomp man himself. The post- <laughs> I had I had Garchomp as um my backup pick, but I think I'll go. I'll put Dragonite in there as the original dragon. Um, they they ruined my boy with his shiny and had him green instead of pink and followed yeah. suit, or even you know just had a blue like as the. Drag- Dratini Dratini and Dragonair. Air. But yeah, mm. like when you need, when you think back playing Pokemon as a kid, it was have you got a Dragonite? You must have a Dragonite. You have to have a Dragonite. Yeah. Has it got a hyper beam, even though there's a stab, you get no stab from it. But it's like, yeah, it's, you have to have a Dragonite and even still now it's like it's it's just the Dragonite's a tank and he's a great postman. And especially like when you fight him at the end of the Elite Four. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah, when Blade it's, has it's, one. It just kind of hypes up that whole like this is the end game Pokemon like this is not a legendary but like on that kind of level of class. Yeah, yeah. It's because then... like back in the day, it was the first dragon. Like it was the yeah. first, well, the only dragon in Gen One, really. And then they turned him into a postman. They turned him into a postman. Do you even oh. remember when the first film came out? The hype with getting the Dragonite card. Whenever you go to the cinema, you get the card. I, I do, Stephen. I very I'll much remember that it. whole series with the was it the gold cards, wasn't it, or the gold plated things? And I'm about to get it... slagged by Louise again for showing off something on the podcast because she's always slagging me for doing it. Hmm. You mean these ones up on the top? Yes, that one, yeah. Mr. Post- Postman himself. Postman Dragonite. <laughs> but there was another one as well that came out afterwards, wasn't there? Um, I think it was like a close-up picture of Dragonite or something. Or I can't remember. I can't remember. It, wasn't, it wasn't the original one, but that's I remember getting that one anyway. Yeah, getting the hype around that, getting like a free, powerful Dragonite just for going to see the movie. Class. Our poor parents had to sit through Pokemon and then Pokemon 2000. Our poor parents. Now we just go by ourselves. (laughs) Do you know what? I actually remember what was the movie, the the one where Pikachu talks at the end of it. Spoilers, by the way. (sighs) Full spoilers. Yeah. I choose you. I remember actually, I think we went to see that and half the cinema was from the Pokemon DCU group that we're in. Um, it's just like, hi Kev, hi Sean, hi Kev. Hi. It was like, fuck's sake. And everyone just started breaking <laughs> everyone... their shit laughing. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah, that was funny. It was funny. So yeah, yeah, that's my fifth pick, which leaves my legendary slot open for my final pick. Steven, nice. what's your dragon type? <laughs> yeah. I already gave you a dragon you type. Did. You did. So I will stick with Gen 1. And I'm going with my, it's all he knows. Fav- my favorite um, ghost type, uh, um, Gengar. The big boy. Big boy himself. He, he was one of my most sought after Pokemon when it first came out because... But you had no friends to trade with. Exactly. So I couldn't <laughs> get him. I only had a haunt on the watch. How do I, you know, how do you evolve? And my friend's like, oh, you have to, like, you know, train with friends. Like, oh, can we trade? And you need a link cable and all this. Like, oh, it's such a pain in the hole. But then when I eventually got him, it was all worth it. 
Yeah. No, on my out, list, is just your typical OG ghost, like cool yeah. Pokemon. Yeah. For um for my list, I didn't have. I had a backup ghost type in case I needed it, and I actually had Haunter down for mine. I prefer Haunter to Gengar. I don't know what it is. He, I just as a Pokemon, I just prefer Haunter to Gengar. He looks great, but yeah. I just think a lot of middle evolutions get looked at like as just a skipping phase because you're like everyone just wants the third evolution, or if it has no evolution, it's, it stands by itself. But I just feel middle evolutions get a bit of a hard time. They do. It's mm -hmm. like any Pokemon. If you if you train a Pokemon right, like anything can be used at any level. You just gotta power it up and improve its EVs. Mm. But anything can be used competitively, really, at the end of the day. I just prefer yeah. Hond Honda's like a, I don't know, just a cheeky fucker, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Yeah. But I'll never forget that episode where they go into that haunted house in, in the Lander first... Town. Yeah. Yeah. They're all little pricks. <laughs> <laughs> They did. They did him something bad with a shiny form. Jesus. His, his mega Gengar. shiny Gengar. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that. The mega shiny should have been the actual the shiny. normal. Yeah. I don't think I've... It's don't, white. Don't say it's anything. White. Don't, oh, I was gonna I'm say, sorry. let him let him Google it <laughs> and see how yeah, fucking amazing. cool it is. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. That, cool. Completely what... changes it. And then you have the mega. Uh, the shiny Max Raid then Max Raid version of Gengar when it turns. I didn't see that one. It, it's white again, but it, it makes oh, it nice. really cool. And it's got that. It's like oh, the big haunted house kind of thing with the big long tongue, but white. Oh yeah, yes, class, yes, yes, class. Yes, 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 that's, that's cool. Yeah. Steven's got a new wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be a thing if if Gengar wasn't included really somewhere, would it? No. Yeah, he's just no. one of those original kind of he's favorites, a, I feel. Yeah, he's a... Yeah. Always in there. Right, Dylan, number five. My numero five -o is another one from my Sun and Moon playthrough. Um, but the last one I played, not in chronological order, obviously, was Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire before my... That was my playthrough before Sun and Moon, so that kind of reinvigorated yeah, same, it. Yeah, same, yeah, same. But this was a fire dark type, and it just resold the whole fire starters are the best starters, and it's Incineroar. Really liked Incineroar. Um, yeah, him, him and Hall literally had a permanent slot in my team the whole fucking way through, doing all the tapus, doing all the. Where they, they they disregarded gym battles. They done the, the what are they called the trials. Yeah, um, yeah, and being able to learn fighting moves as well on top of a dark and a fire. It's just there's so many bases covered. I'm really um, glad they moved away from the the trials again for sword and shield. I didn't like that at all. <laughs> it was nice to change it up, and because yeah. like they've had just gym battles for how many years? Twenty twenty odd years before yeah. that. Um. And the Z moves as well. Darkest Lariat, I think it was. And yes. was fucking it's class. But yeah, no, and Cinemore. Really, really like him. Re his design is so cool as well. Big fucking fire cat. But yeah. Right. That's my number five, which leaves so, my legendary last um, as well. It's moving on to my legendary then as well. So I was kind of leaving my legendary up for choice depending on what I picked elsewhere but I'm gonna just disregard that and go with the one that I wanted to go with because I just love how it looks it's not really anything about it being strong or anything but it's the Galarian Articuno it's just yes. it's so majestic looking it's yeah it's it looks so sleek doesn't it yeah it's sleek it's, it looks really sleek really yeah, sleek is the right word. Because yeah. it's like it's wearing like a mask as well, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Just a pity it's a psychic flying. Had it, they should have left it with the ice. Had it with a psychic ice type, but yeah, it's. I just love how it looks. That's literally my only reason picking it is I love how it looks. Yeah. 
I think they've nailed that with the redesigns whenever they yeah. bring out a new yeah, kind of in, iteration. In fairness to the three um, legendary boards that they did in the Galarian form, they all look great. Three of them are yeah. fantastic designs. But I just love Galar the Articuno, the purple. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And he was a bollocks to catch. <laughs> He's a bollocks to figure out which one it was. Yeah. I think I looked out and got it on my first try, to be fair. I did actually think I looked out and got it first try. Nice. But one of the other ones, I think one of the other ones is a bit annoying, but I got Articuno enough fine. Um, I had a few backup Step choices pen. there, but I won't go through them. Like I, I love the design of other ones. Some of them are strong. You've got your fan favorites, but that's what I'm going to go with. And I also won't name any more in case Dill wants to take one and I'm ruining his fun. Thank uh, you. No for me giving it up because my last one is not legendary. Because you're um, a bit too early. Yeah, Stephen. Blew my load too soon. Um, the this one was my my grass type, and um, it's my it's not my favorite evolution, but it would have been the strongest grass type that I wanted to put in, which would be Leafy on. Um, definitely up there with. One of my favorite evolutions. I think my favorite would be Flareon. Um, mm. But it's, yeah, it was just when I was looking through the list of grass types that I liked, it was probably the strongest contender. Um, so, yeah. So. Yeah, Leafeon's really cool. That was like, what, that was with Glaceon, wasn't it? That yeah. Got released? So, yeah, they, so they, they were the two that environment. Yeah. And they're really cool. So grass types would probably be my least favorite type of Pokemon. They all just the, feel all, weak up to a lot. Yeah, all the Bulbuff source stands would be given out to me, but I just don't like grass type Pokemon. They're boring. No. They need a dual typing to even yeah. any good at all. But yeah, yeah. I got. I actually looked through my list of my favorite ones, like my big preparation list that I did up this here. Like, there's not a single grass type on that. <laughs> not a single like one is grass type. That's another thing, like, where, when it goes down to, like, personal preference, I always find, like, when you look on, like, forums and stuff and you see, like, someone's favorite Pokemon is, like, a fucking something so strange, like a dugong or something like that. Dugong. And you're kind of like... It's dugong alone. No, but that, but you would, you'd never classify it as one of your top ten fucking Pokemon. But I think it's just everyone's kind of personal experiences with the franchise at one point or another just kind of shines the... The strange, the, the strange preferences. I do actually like Dugong from Gen One though, because it was sort of water ice. <laughs> but no, like, 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 it's, like Stephen said, like it's not necessarily the most powerful, but you just, you, you just take a shine to it. Yeah, yeah. That's the so. Same what we're, me. what we're saying is, none of us are grass starter for types in Gen One apart from no, Stephen. Stephen Bulba's was class. Cool. Yeah, no, I liked, I liked Bulba. Ivysaur Bul Bulba was easy favorite. mode though. Yeah. Because if, if you if like if you think about it logic again, I'm gonna get fucking absolutely hate for hate for this. But Bulbasaur, like if you chose Bulbasaur in red, blue, yellow, well red, blue because Pikachu is yellow, obviously. But if you chose Bulbasaur in red, blue, you were set up for the first two gyms already. Whereas yeah. if you chose Charmander or, or well Squirtle, you were set for Brock. But Charmander was hard mode. Because it meant you had, meant you had to go f catch something in Viridian Forest on the way, whereas like we, by the time you got to Surge, you'd already been through Diglett's not Diglett's Cave, um, Mount Moon, so you could catch a Rock type in there to deal with Surge's shit. Anyway, mm. I'm going off on a tangent again. Uh, Charmander for life. Fuck you all, bitches. Um, Dylan, <laughs> what's your legendary? <laughs> My legendary. Uh, it was hard to pick because. There's so like, many. There's so many, and like, I only watched all the movies during the summer, um, in a row. So it's kind of like I was I was really into one at a specific time. Then I watched the next one. I'm like, oh yeah, this one's really cool. And it's one of my favorites. And then you watch another one. But I settled on just mainly because he looks class, and he's evil, and it's Darkrai. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, and I know I already so, picked a dark with Incineroar, but 
he's he's fire as well. But yeah, Darkrai is really cool. Um, yeah, got fucked over with shiny as well. He did. It's just yeah. a little tint. Just a tint. But like that, I wanted to pick like the likes of Groudon and Kyogre and stuff like that. Just I feel like I was more into that kind of story arc in the games as well because I never played a game with Darkrai as the main kind of. Ending and especially being a mythical as well, he wouldn't really be involved in the the main arcs. But now Darkrai, I think it's just one of those I love the look of. Whenever I look at him on a list, I'm like, yeah, he's class. Yeah, it is a cool legendary. Um, strong as well. Mm. I think they nailed the legendaries all the time. Like I, I'm trying to think. I don't think there's one legendary where I went. That's awful. Do you know who I, I, was honourable second for me was um, Tapu Koku. I Which one's Tapu on, Koku? I, just tell me. Ta, just four Tapu Koku like, is videos. the main, um, he's electric. Oh, yes, fairy. yes. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. In Sun and Moon. Like, mm. I know I'm harping on about Sun and Moon, but like as a reintroduction to the series. Um, mm. I loved them. Like that, that whole thing where they, they, were, they were all kind of the same kind of conch looking. Um, Pokemon, but they all had their God. distinguishable features. But that's that's what it was. It's like they're all, all right, of, Lord of the Flies, calm down. Their shell kind of form and yeah. And I I I really like the, the tapus. So I I prefer my favorite tapu was Lely Tapu Lely. That's the which was a psychic, psychic fairy it? type. Yeah. I just love the color of it. It's such a it's, yeah. The color is nice design. Um. Especially trying to balance four different or four legendaries in one kind of mm-hmm. similar look it was really cool. But yeah, my honorable second, I had Kyurem, Kyurem, how are you fucking pronounce it? I had that in as my yeah the dragon in as my second. I also had I had Xerneas, Eveltal, and Mewtwo there as well to pick from. It's like what's a legendary list if you're not including Mewtwo? It's one the, thing it's I the hated original. About, yeah, he was the legendary, mm-hmm. the powerhouse, the yeah, and, that and like that, it was cool. It, shiny. it was it was hard, like even just throughout the list, trying not to pick your generic kind of, yeah. f- like you, you pick your Garchomp, Tyranitar, Tyranitar, fucking Charizard and stuff like that. And it's trying to just pick something a little bit kind of different that you wouldn't necessarily see a six and be like. That's someone's first preference. Yeah, like I would, my, I didn't have a strong second, but one of them was definitely um, Arceus or Arceus, whatever way you want to pronounce it. Yeah, I was surprised I, you didn't have that in, Stephen, because you like, you asked was, me, can you include it, and then you didn't include it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got the field. No, I, I take it back. <laughs> but like. It's the ult- you know it's essentially the ultimate Pokemon. It's the god Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Why would you mm-hmm. want it in your team? But yeah, and, and in the movie, what's the movie that he's in? Um, what's the name of it now? God, something to do with time. Okay. Yeah, but that's like that's a great movie, and to have him fight Dialga, Palkia, and okay. the, you know, lap yeah. them all like nah, get out of here. back in your own zones. <laughs> And you're just like, yeah, man, that's... Why would you not? I, I was just waiting for Ash to just tr- chuck a Pokeball and just be like... <laughs> Turn his hat backwards. A miss. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's only in the uh, Legends of Arceus that happens. <laughs> yeah, that was definitely overthrown. <laughs> so overthrown. But you know what one I really like? And I'll get hate for this one. But I really like the design of um, Eternus. Eternatus Eternatus was really cool yeah and I like how they kept that so quiet in like promos and stuff like that there was no hint at it at all and it doesn't fit into the design of that kind of old English that they were going with with the Zakian and Zamazenta or just that whole generation itself and then just the the big fucking space alien thing comes down like the Oxys yeah that was actually a really yeah. cool cutscene in the game. Yeah, that was a really yeah. Cool the turn as well was really cool. Mm. Another one for me. I used to never think it was a legendary. 
uh, with uh, mythical Keldio. Yeah, I, I I I actually had that as one of my possibles as well. It's a really, yeah. just a cool like, fucking Pokemon. His whole story of trying to get into the Swords of Justice or whatever, and then having to fight um Curran to earn a spot, and then being a little I'm ready, I'm but you're not really ready, and then getting shot on. It was a cool story. The stories to the legendaries, like they're all just so fascinating. Mm. Mm. What I like about them as well is it's like a lot of how they're actually linked, the way Arceus made the when I sent you the video a few weeks ago made, yeah. And how they're actually linked to each other and each serve their own purpose within like the They're different times and stuff like that. I think yeah, Austin John plays has a really good breakdown of all the the lore to do with the legendaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. I only I only watched that the other day. I think it was because on the live or YouTube channel, um, it came up as like a recommended video. I was like, I'll watch that. Yeah, it's it's really <laughs> interesting though the way it's done. It's really yeah. interesting that he made Palky and Dog and then it fed or yeah fed the whole way down. Yeah, and then it was and like the- it was like Pikachu every Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's like I would love. I hope that with this Legends of Arceus that we get more of that storytelling, but explicit. Yeah. yeah. That to be the start of the Pokemon lore coming to the forefront mm-hmm. and being the start of the story. That would yeah. be amazing. That was a conversation yeah. that we had, actually, Stephen, a couple of weeks ago afterwards. It was me spin foil hatting you in that. And I used that video as an example in that you, like they're introducing us to Arceus and they're actually could they could actually do it in chronological order in that Arceus created whatever they create and then create this and create that and actually tell the story of the legendary Pokemon mm. and work their way through it. It, it's a, it could be a very interesting way of doing it. Because like the majority of the, the main series games, it's always like the bad guys at the time are trying to bring this Pokemon or this legendary back to life and can't let it happen and you get there just still we're saving that for pet thieves and hates <laughs> but no like uh, that would be great to just kind of flesh out the story a little bit more and kind of like you said focus on one for that whole game mm. yeah, that's what i said uh, yeah. i was like so tinfoil hat theory about pokemon legends if Arceus created everything we could see either sequels or dlc in the same style as this formula going forward and they could yeah. actually tell the story of each of the legends as we go through it all. I think it'd be an amazing way to do it. I really do. Absolutely. I think you're... Yeah, he created... You... Sorry. Oh, did you... What's it? Can you hear that, Dale? Your, your microphone. I don't know if you hit the gain or something. It's... It seems you're picking up a little bit of background noise. No. No. Uh... no. I, I'm hearing it. It's just you, Stephen. Uh, hopefully we're not. So yeah, so Arceus created Dalga and Palkia, space and time. That's what it was. And then it, and then Giratina, which was um, the uh, power antimatter. I'm not watching the video right now, I swear. I <laughs> that Giratina. Is that what you said? Giratina, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, I'm, no, I'm... Yeah, I'm and so that. then, so Palkia, Dialga, and Giratina, Giratina, Gyratina, Gyrat, wherever you want to go with this, Stephen, they created the, the, they, they created the universe, and then from that it came down to the Earth, which is Groudon and um, Kyogre, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, it could mm. be a really cool new way of storytelling if Game Freak are brave enough to do it. Yeah. Because imagine you could do it like a Breath of the Wild where you go to the, like, you know, Mount Doom type thing and you hear about Groudon and by unlocking that you get the region and the history of it. And yeah. Be cool. Very cool. cool. Yeah, really cool. So anyway, my, my team would win in a fight, just saying. That's a good point, though, uh, actually. Stephen's in told, the comments. Yeah, so just tank so, everything. <laughs> yeah, basically. So... In, in the comments, if you've stuck it out with us picking our teams because it's Pokemon and it's nerdy and whatever, if you have stuck out this far, I've put the pictures at each at our webcams. So oh, Dill's nice. team is beside him. Who do you think, other side Steven, to your... Yeah. 
See, Who do different. you think would win out of those three teams? Let us know in the comments below. And who would your sixth pick? If you could, could pick six from across the generations, who would you pick? I did not let pick any of the six that we've picked. <laughs> no. It's like, it's like, yeah, actually, we actually ended up picking six different teams just by first choices anyway. Yeah. So yeah. I was worried you were going to say Darkrai. That's why I was like, oh, shit. No, I didn't even, I didn't have it there to choose. I was going to go with um, Articuno, Cura, or Xerneas, but... Um, because Xerneas is a beautiful Pokemon as well. It really is. Yeah. It really is. And the shine is cool. And uh, Yveltal's also got a cool shiny. Anyway, it's a couple of... With no Tyranitar there, we've no guard chumps. No Charizards. Story. I, my, I name anytime I get a, a guard chump, which is a gibble. No Charizard. Yeah, we're cool people. Um, We're Pokemon hipsters. All my guard chumps are named Mr. Tibbles. Because, because I bought a Pokemon Y, I'm going to say, pre-owned. And it came with a Gibble with the nickname, all caps, Mr. Tibbles, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And it's one of those things, you buy a pre-owned Pokemon game, you have to see what the, pre the previous owner has left you as a little present. Usually they leave you absolutely nothing. But I got Mr. Tibbles. And it just I saw the name Mr. Tibbles and it just made me wet myself laughing. So every Garchomp now is Mr. Tibbles. I'd love to know who did it, because they they created a meme for me and I love them for doing so. Put it on Twitter, see what we can get. <laughs> Found owner of Gibble named Mr. Tibbles. Put posters up all over on lamppost. Send out the milk cartons. We might find the owner of that game. Do you know what? Saying that, I've been trying to buy a couple of the old um, GBA games or a copy of Diamond Pearl Platinum. They're impossible to get in Ireland at the moment. You can get them through um, CEX in the UK, but good luck getting that shipped here at the moment. I don't think a lot of businesses still haven't fixed their shit. But yeah, like there's you cannot get them in Ireland at the moment. I've tried. I'm really that. I'll save that pet hate and pet peeve from when we're talking about them because I've got one that's making me quite angry right now. Which is our segue. <laughs> so yeah, in, that there's our segue into our pet peeves. I'm going. Ah, leave the Pokemon pictures up for a few more minutes. It's not doing any harm. Um. So. Things that make you go grrr. Um, so we've all got them. We're trying mm -hmm. to keep these specific to gaming. I went first on the Pokemon picking, so it's between you guys. I don't know. Do not care how you just want to decide. We'll do it in snake order. Deal? You get to go first. Cool. Um, one of my biggest... And it just, just for PvP. Like, P PvE, it's fine, because... You have your music on, you're jamming, or you're just doing your own thing and taking it easy, you're doing your job, blah, blah, blah. But silence! <laughs> when you're playing a PvP game and you're talking to somebody or someone's talking and then all you're getting back is static. <laughs> Especially when something goes wrong and then it just creates a bad atmosphere. Yeah. That's one of my things that I'm kind of like, you start trying to fill the void then, and then kind of, it just, it, yeah. Just I find that when... if one person is doing that, then it can kind of, it's like poison, it spreads to the rest of the group. Yeah, and like, it, it necessarily nothing bad would have happened, it just, like, obviously it's, it's when, I, after someone makes a mistake or whatever, but it's just, it spreads, and it's kind of like, everyone's like on eggshells then for the next thing to be said and um, when it's just making something out of nothing really Instead now there's a di there's it. a difference between going making a joke about something and getting salty about something and it's been able to know when you are crossing that line from oh my god this is dumb to oh my god this is dumb it's, it's knowing when you're you've crossed that threshold and pulling back in the rage 
Nobody wants to listen to your rage. I'm talking to myself. No, Which is the opposite sure. <laughs> of silence. <laughs> like, I'd rather listen to that. So, well, some to a certain extent, but yeah, it's just. Oh, it was, sorry, like... sorry. I completely misunderstood what you were saying, Dill. Sorry. I thought you were saying people getting salty and ragey. You're saying when you're trying to have a conversation and you're just not getting anything back. Is that right? So, well, yeah, when you. Wait, silence. Sorry. Like, yeah, sorry, when, when sorry, you're playing a PvP game, someone okay. dies or goes blah, 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 and it's like just silence and it's kind of like it yeah. just creates a bad atmosphere no i i sorry i completely misunderstood what you were saying um yeah i get i get what you're saying and that would be a pet hate of mine as well that if i'm playing say if i'm playing trials or apex or whatever for example and someone dies and you're still alive and you're still fighting and you could do with a bit of comms to say one pushing from x angle or y angle or they're here. Just simple comms to let you know what's going on it makes a big difference. And then staying silent for three to five business days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 probably my biggest one because it's like yeah. we know you're not. We're not always going to talk about stuff like, especially playing a PvP game if it's very situational and stuff like that. But yeah, it does it does kind of. That's actually just to speak about the reverse of your pet hate of people going silent i find that if i'm playing something pvp having a generic normal conversation makes me enjoy playing much more so if i'm playing quick play in destiny and we're just talking about the football from the weekend or whatever we're talking about some nonsense one division which i still haven't watched just having that normal conversation <laughs> increases my enjoyment of playing PvP. So yeah. like if I'm playing by myself, I won't go into Crucible because not having that voice in my ear just it makes me just get really salty. Because it's just not having that yeah, silence, having nothing there. It's just like oh, I'm bored. I'm just bored, so I get salty because mm. I'm bored. So, I agree. I, I agree. That's top of my list. It's also why I've become terrible at playing single player games. Because not having that voice in my ear is it, it's like a weird loneliness feeling of why is no one talking to me right now? Mm. Yeah. I don't know where to start with my pet hate because I've one that matches and one that doesn't. I'm actually do you know what? I'm gonna jump off what Kev was saying there. One of my pet hate, hates is playing single player games with friends. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, we're, I need to Defin, add that to my Defin, list. Defin. <laughs> now I'm I... not, I, Stephen. You can approach that two ways. By the way, I'm fucking. I know I'm commandeering your pet hate here because I hate this. Playing a single player game with someone else on the couch beside you. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Sorry. Go on. Well, I I've never had that, so I can't. Well, I, I hate I it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate that as well. But no, what I, well, I have a specific memory in mind of where I went, fuck this. I was playing the Rise of Iron campaign and do you remember there was a big like loading queue to get in? It was the first time they had a queuing system. Yeah. And me it's and famous. One of the, yeah, me and one of the other guys from my old clan got in like really quick before the queue got up and um, we we're like, oh, come on, we'll play through the game. So all the clan were in my ear chatting about sitting in the thing in the queue and me and this other guy were running through the campaign and um, i just couldn't hear the campaign because everyone was talking yeah. bitch and everyone's moaning and here's this campaign going on I'm like what salad what the fuck is going on finished the campaign and went I, I don't know what happened and ever since then i just because you've said it to me before kev you're like oh what are you doing like jump into discord I'm like no i'm playing a single player game I do not want someone talking to me while I'm listening or playing this. Yeah. Doing something that I know and have played a million times or whatever. But if it's something I'm into the story of, it's like, I just don't want anyone near me or talking to me about it. And that's a pet hate of mine. I have a counterpoint. One... Go for it. Set a toggle def on the button for Discord. <laughs> which, is yeah. what I do, which is what I do. Someone will be in the middle of a conversation. Toggle def <laughs> But then that kind of negates the whole point of being in a the chat. Then, like, see, it, it it depends when it is. If it's day one launch of a Destiny expansion, for example, and 
there's three people in chat and you're playing through it when you get to a cutscene I don't mind doing the toggle that's fine yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but in terms but of like, say playing points. cyberpunk like yeah. I wasn't sitting in chats because I didn't want to talk to people I wanted to be in Night City and it takes away from the immersion as well especially in single player games and it was like actually it happened to me this week that, that, that you mentioned it like I, we were on the couch Kathy was watching telly I think we were watching um, some stupid fucking reality TV thing and I was playing the Switch and I had the volume down but I was trying to follow the subtitles and Kathy was talking about what was on the telly like they missed out on the story and I was like I haven't a fucking clue what's going on and I don't know what I'm after doing and it's just yeah it gets really annoying because you just you can't focus then and it feels like you've missed out on that you're not you're not as kind of you're not as into it then you know I assume Kathy doesn't watch the podcast if she, I said it to her straight away <laughs> after. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The one with you, um, what she... we what talk in a relationship? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, and I was like, I had moved down to Tralee for the first time, and um, we were in an apartment, and the PlayStation, I had the PlayStation with my TV in the sitting room, and I was playing God of War, and um, I, I was like, oh, Jim, I'm gonna go for it, and. Uh, I turn it on and starts with Kratos and he's like, boy. And mm -hmm. she just looks, turn that fucking off now. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I just put on headphones. So put on headphones. And then looks at me again. She's like, you're breathing loudly. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm like, I'll just go into another room. I'm gone. <laughs> but like that, it's when you're, when you're doing it, like they don't know, or like if you're in a chat with someone, they don't know the points that you're trying to listen yeah. to. Which is which is more annoying because it's like I'm not like annoyed that you're talking to me. I'm just annoyed that it's right at this second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why you just hear Deal whenever like it's day one launch and if there's someone extra in chat, Deal will just go cutscene and deafen. <laughs> Whereas, I I don't even do the polite. I just deafen and someone's still yeah. yapping away and like i don't give a shit what you're saying man. <laughs> i care more about vuvu zela and the iron lords sure you don't have to do that anymore in destiny because you have to log in every tuesday at six o'clock to get a bit of story true <laughs> yeah well, anyway yeah. i think that's that's finishing yeah. up on that one so yeah. i'm gonna go with a very pet. specific pet hate um, because I'm gonna save my big. I have one really big pet hate that drives me insane, and it's actually could be. It's I'll segue into that in a minute. Warlocks who do not charge their vortex grenades before throwing them drives me insane. So okay. if you're playing top tree Nova Slova, if you hold down your grenade before throwing the grenade. It has a much bigger area of effect and does more damage. Warlocks, charge your fucking vortex mm. grenades, please. Um, I was watching a video on Twitter the other day and it was a very good video. I won't say whose it was, but they were playing Warlock and Slova and the gameplay wasn't the important part. But when they weren't charging their vortex grenades, it was driving me insane. It really was annoying me so much. So please charge your vortex grenades. That is the end of my TED talk. Is that only specific to Slova? Yeah. Okay. Well, on um, the other ones, on um, each your grenade. So, in general, warlocks and charge your grenades anyway. So you've got <coughs> the is Sun Singer. What's it called? <coughs> You're right there, Dill. Yeah, it swallowed yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so they have a healing grenade, so they can charge it and throw it at a teammate to heal them. Or at the floor to heal themselves. Or with... Um, I can't think of the name of it. Where you can eat your grenade. Uh, Devour. So Devour. with Devour Warlock, you eat your grenade to start Devour, which gives you healing every time you get a kill. So yeah, the different Warlock grenades, you can charge them for different abilities. So charge your fucking Warlock grenades. Please. I really play as Warlock, as you can I, tell. I don't even play as a Warlock. I play as a Titan, but it annoys me when I see a Warlock not knowing how to play their class. I mean, I'd rather play as a Warlock than a Titan, but that's a conversation that for another day. <laughs> Go on, Everyone next. gives me shit for playing a Titan, but... Everyone has their preferences. All... Whatever you like playing, you play. Whatever's comfortable. Which leads me on to my next one. <laughs> 
people Troller complaining. versus fucking M and K. Oh, fair enough. Ooh, <laughs> nobody gives a shit. Just play how you want to play. Mm-hmm. Whatever makes you enjoy the experience better. Mm-hmm. Whatever makes you more comfortable. Mm-hmm. If you want to sit back with a controller, fair dues. If mm-hmm. you want to sit on top of the fucking screen with a mouse and keyboard, do it. I hate the whole. I just I hate that whole argument, and I get so tilted every time it gets mentioned yeah. because I play on controller, and it's kind of like no matter what you say, it's like you're trying to defend. But it's something that doesn't need to be defended or shouldn't be defended. Same with people who main mouse and keyboard. Like it's just it's just another input. That's all. What if you play one hand on a mouse and one hand on a controller? You get banned. That's what happens. <laughs> Cause you're cheating. <laughs> Cause you're cheating. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's just it's one of those whenever it comes up, it's and it's it's always such a controversial thing when it comes up and you're always on one side of it or another. Yeah. It's like I'm just here to play yeah, games. But you know what it is? It's not the... So, if you're speaking about balancing weapons for controller users or balancing Mm. weapons for M and K users, that's a genuine conversation that has to happen because, for example, snipers with a controller have needed to have their aim assist toned back in. Toned down. But what happens is what you say happens, Dill, is the defensiveness of it. It's the, oh, well, they have that. No, it doesn't matter what they have. It's like... You play whatever way you're most comfortable or is the most fun for you. But when the genuine conversations have to happen of what needs to be buffed or nerfed or balanced, don't get defensive. They're not assaulting you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the same same with the whole, like you said, if this could go on all night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but like like you said, if aim assist needs to be toned down for snipers, it's like if you're the one defending controller, you're not necessarily saying it shouldn't be toned down, but mm. that's how it just gets taken in. Yeah. And yeah, so it's re- it's really annoying. And uh, yeah. What annoys me, Dill, actually, Stephen is having to sit there silently for a second because this is a pet hate, is when say you're playing competitively and people if say someone on the other team is using a controller, you don't know if they're doing it because they want to or because they have to or because they only have their feet to play with. And people are like, Oh, this guy's using a controller. It's like who mm. gives a shit? Exactly. He still beats you in a gunfight. It doesn't matter what his input <laughs> method was. He's just better. <laughs> but the only reason he won was because he had a controller. Yeah, yeah no. It's... <laughs> yeah, they like get, they get really playing, annoying. It does. If you're playing with an M and K, the movement capabilities you have over someone playing with a controller oh, it's ridiculous. means they, they should. If you're on the same skill level, there's no, like if and they beat you, they beat you because they're fucking outplayed you. Mm. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah. That's my big one. Well, second big. So take there is away. actually just a slightly segue <laughs> off that as well, though. Is and this is actually coming from someone who prefers playing with a mouse and keyboard. I can't play first person games with a controller anymore. <laughs> I just don't enjoy it. It feels like I'm drunk on GTA mm. Four. But controller and actually accessibility outside of controller like it needs to be made much more commonplace especially on pc games that people can use controllers because like if, if if you wanted to play say something that's only out on pc and you want to play it world of warcraft perfect example deal you want to play world of warcraft the controller accessibility again ergonomic mouse <laughs> yeah the controller accessibility isn't good enough no. and it, is, it needs to become something that is specifically thought about for every game developed let people play with a controller because some people need to mm-hmm. or you could just do what sony doesn't allow you to use a banana to play vr but that's a conversation for, for another day <laughs> ah, it speaks to someone like I, i've worked with people with disabilities in my working life and having accessibility to do stuff that everyone can do like it, it, it shouldn't be you shouldn't be excluded just because you've been forced to use an input method you cannot mm. physically use but anyway and not every input method make needs games to be accessible redirected to xbox control as well <laughs> let me play with my playstation controller <laughs> i hate that oh my god the overlay is always xbox and it's like press x it's like i am 
Same press <laughs> X still, not cross. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, cross. Yeah. <laughs> Anything to yeah. say, Stephen, or shall we move on to the next one? Oh, I'll move on to my one. Um, I've got so many here. I'm just trying to pick one out. One thing I will say, and my my comment after this is, uh, seriously, fuck this. The live <laughs> service model. The what? I, the live service model of games. Oh, yes. Fuck the live service model. It has ruined one of my favorite games, which is Destiny. Because, and I know I'm going to get hate saying this, but people are saying this week that, um, you know, there was a cutscene, uh, uh, whatever, I, there's some cutscene that comes out this week yeah. to do with you know, um, Venezuela's assassination. I don't get to see that because I didn't do last week's stuff. And even though people are saying, oh, you can't get to see it, you can't. You have to do week fours or whatever week last week was. Yeah, week four. And you have to do that week's mission to get to see what happens this week. So I'm missing out on really cool story content because FOMO apparently is a thing for story content now. Mm -hmm. I really hate that model in the game. Like, I'm okay with it, with time gaining me so long as I know that that content will be there at the end of the season. It won't be. If these it, just... it will be it will be there for is it three seasons from now i think it will the... be there next you i'm pretty <laughs> sure you can still play it after the end of the season i, could I don't be I wrong think that, but i think that's only exotics and those special missions i think story stuff or maybe goes. it's only the battleground actually yeah maybe yeah. the story thing is gone i could be wrong yeah i could be getting my wires crossed but like, so if it's a case that it was a story thing that I could just progress through as a quest, like that's fine because I don't have time. And if I'm two weeks behind, there cool. should be catch up. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. There is one there now, and I don't, I don't want to have to go and do last week's stuff to then get into this week's story. Can, when can you yeah. do this week's stuff? So say you didn't do last week's. If you do last week's today, can you do this week's one today? Or do you have to wait till next week's reset? A week whole. I don't know. So I need to see what one was last week. And so, it, so I, I, if there's a catch up, I think it's okay. If you can catch up on the same day. So if you can start week one today and catch up as far as week five today, I'm kind of okay with it then. But if it's a case of FOMO where you it will take you five weeks to catch up, I'm not okay with that. Like I know they did it well with Shadowkeep. Uh, or arrivals, sorry, season of arrivals, where if you only did the last week, you could get Eris's mm -hmm. conversation. That's ten. Um, oh yeah, and you that could, yeah. Tied to one specific mission, mm. but this is tied to battlegrounds and killing the the warlords and and last week's uh, mission, last week's quest step was actually quite long. There was like eleven steps to it. So like, I I'm at a severe disadvantage when I don't have the time to put into it. To then story con, and I know there's a lot of people giving out now with title taking over Destiny's Twitter and Instagram, but like I don't mind that stuff, but I mind being locked out of <clears throat> content because I haven't got time to play for one week. On that, Stephen, I'm kind of I don't like the whole not that I don't want to say it so strongly as don't like the whole Twitter takeover thing, it's just it's out of context for me because like you I haven't done the last two weeks or whatever story. Yeah. I don't even know where to access the story. I, I think I asked you today Kev, is it the Battlegrounds? You that go, you just you do go to the helm week? table, yeah. For, yeah. Clar for clarity, what we're specifically talking about is the, the mission you get from the helm table. So yeah. it's whatever When Saladin week, talks uh, to you, isn't it? When Saladin speaks to you, yeah. yeah. So you get a you go to the, t the, tab the war table in the helm you get the weekly mission and you get some story content from that. And this week, when you logged in, there was a cutscene where, full spoilers by the way, a Scion tried to assassinate Zavala. He was un the Didn't Scion was unsuccessful, and it appears that Keitel sent the Scion to kill Zavala. Mm. Lots of stuff happens in that Zavala saw. Um, the crow, uh, Uldrun Sov, believes for now it was a hallucination. Yes, yeah, Stephen, that happened. Because, uh, okay, so the Scion went to kill Zavala. Uldrun Sov went to stop it. Zavala saw Uldrun Sov without the mask on. 
Ah, uh, okay. Copped that the Scion was there and killed the Scion, and then Uldren Solve disappeared, and Zavala thinks it was a hallucination. And then Osiris gave Uldren, the crow, a slap on the bum for taking his mask off, but and has put him in charge of as basically keeping watch over Zavala in case there's further assassination attempts. It appears, obviously, because it's a cabal that Keitel has sent the scion that killed Zavala, but the Twitter takeover makes it seem like, actually, Keitel may not have sent the scion after all, and we will probably find that out in the coming weeks. It's a really cool story if you're playing it! And that's that's (laughs) That's the the annoying part, because it's such a cool story arc. The problem I have with it is that they said pre-Beyond Light launch, that they were going to cut down on the FOMO. And if anything, they've actually made it worse. Like, all I've seen this week is positivity in regards to storytelling this season. It's fantastic. But I feel like I haven't been in the loop of the storytelling because I'm at a point now where I'm not getting my enjoyment from Destiny. So I'm exploring other games. And why should I feel hindered if I want to come back in a couple of weeks' time and play a story in Destiny. Whereas, like you were saying, Stephen, the live service aspect or the model, I like it if it's an addition, if it's a complement to a main kind of drop. Like, yeah. for example, if you got a campaign, my favorite word in the fucking Oxford Dictionary right now, if you got a campaign and a live service complemented it a couple of weeks after, same with releasing a raid or releasing kind of additives rather than this is your story we're just spacing out over three months i think they could take a leaf from um final fantasy 14 book or world of warcraft book or anything else like that warframe probably the same i've not played it but it's in the case of they have it, it is content seasonal content is coming out but if you start at week one or if you start at two days before the next stuff comes out you can access all of that content. Yeah. And that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be drip fed over five weeks. I don't know if you can get it all in one day. If you can, my point here is a moo point. Cow's point. It doesn't no one cares about it. Um Joey. Huh? <laughs> Joey. <laughs> but it should be the case of here's all your content. You can mm-hmm. play it when you want. And you yeah. have until whatever two years time to play it because eventually and be upfront about it say look this content is going to go away in 18 months 24 months 36 months whatever the time period is you have until then to play it but i yeah i agree the fomo of it, dropping it week by week like you guys have totally missed out on really oh, cool completely. story and like even yeah. from doing the glycon mission the presage mission every week we've been getting lots of story to do with What's gone on on the ship? What's gone on with Callus? What's gone on with Keitel? So there's lots... Like, the story's been fantastic this season. And what's been great about it is that it's been delivered in-game. Instead yeah. of in... Here's your lore tab. Here's a book of sorrows, which is up there. In that you have to go outside the game or sit reading Grimoire cards. Whereas we've actually gotten voice lines, dialogue for yeah. all of this story. But it's... Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. The live service model is... It, it puts a lot of people at a disadvantage. Yeah. Unfortunately. Especially for a story-driven game. Yeah. Because it and is becoming annoying... far more story-driven. Yeah. And in the season where it's diving more into that, I feel like I'm not in touch with that at all. You know? Mm. Whereas it's the, it's the whole thing it's like it's forcing you to have one game or one main kind of game and i know it's logging in on a tuesday at six o'clock and right now i feel like i'm such a hypocrite because i have all the time in the world to play it but i just i have no drive for it and i don't want to force myself um to do, to do something that i'm not enjoying but yeah no just it's i completely agree Stephen. that there's benefits to it surely but there's also massive hindrances, especially when it comes to main story. I think that was the one. What's yours? Go on, finish your point. And are you saying to move on? No, but yeah, finish your point. Yeah. Are you? My yeah. point was actually going to be still saying that there's benefits to the live service model, and 
I don't want to say I don't think there is benefits, but I will say that Destiny is arguably the only successful game with that model. To do it, yeah. And I think Destiny is successful in spite of the live service model, not in support of the live service model. Yes. Yeah. Well, Look at me being... Like, I've ran out of... I don't know what I'm trying to say. But, like, just for example, look how... Look how hyped my opinions very the well. September releases or the big yearly releases are because it's just a big massive drop of yeah. story. It doesn't necessarily need to be a new area or anything. Just give me dialogue and fucking quests. It's just it's, yeah. That's the, that, that's my favorite point of the game. Whereas I'd happily log in once every six not once every six months but on a six month period to play a massive chunk of story and then bring out your dungeons and your raids along that live service timeline or new fucking strikes and shit like that but, we said yeah. we weren't going to talk about destiny for 69 days 61 days whatever it was it's like that um that thing where you see the sign it's like zero days since destiny drama <laughs> it's now zero days since spoken about Destiny. Right. i'll move on from destiny and this is actually probably going to lead me into playing a, a Suffering Together game. Because when I was thinking of this, I thought of... Not necessarily a game I don't like, but a genre I don't like. And it comes from other games having them. I fucking hate quick time events. Delete them! I hate them! They're horrible! Either give me gameplay, or give me a cutscene! Don't combine them together! For, for just clarity i don't mind in the game like god of war did it very well or sekiro does it where you have fought this hard battle and you're giving me a really rewarding kill sequence i have no problem with that to an extent but one game like spider-man had quick time events during chases where a scaffolding's flying at you and you have to press a sequence of buttons to dodge it Please stop. Please, just give me a cutscene mm. instead. Yeah. So, games such as Until Dawn and what's that game? <laughs> it was a PS exclusive. It's on PC. Detroit Become Human. Those sort of games are my worst nightmare that are just yeah. a full game of quick time events. I yep. just, uh, No. They're just... No, I can't. That's The Last of Us as well, really, isn't it? For, well... You've got, there's a few of them dotted throughout it and I can get over them. But when they, like, don't give me a quick time event because you couldn't create good combat yeah. in a game. Give me good combat or just don't fucking bother. A quick time Especially event. Especially with is, boss it, fights as well. Yeah, isn't it? it's crap. Yeah. It's boring. It's. I'm going to cut in on that boss fight one. And you mentioned Sekiro. And I'm glad you did because that is bullshit. The first time that happens, if you're not on the ball... And you just got through a hard fight and you didn't see the or one prompt. The stagger? Yeah. Get get wrecked. You're doing that fucking boss. <laughs> get wrecked. <laughs> what you have to do is like you take down its health bar and then if it's a, you know, if it's a the proper final bosses, it will give you a prompt for a shinobi kill. And if you don't do that, they'll deflect your attack and then you'll have to go do that last bar of health again. And it's such bullshit. It's like rough. if you're just expecting it. It caught me out the first time, and I was so pissed. So no, fuck quick time events in all games. See, I, I don't mind that when it's give it, when it. I have to press one button to give me a cool kill sequence because I feel like I've earned that cool kill sequence. Yeah, and God of War does it very well too. Um, I'm, there's plenty of other games do it, but the likes of R1, Square X, rotate your analog stick. I was like, please give me strength. Yeah. Please. Because there's no like, there's just no benefit to doing it. But like, like you said, if they just threw that in as like a little kind of scene where you don't have to press anything at all, it would be a cool little transition into the next phase or the next area that you're going to or whatever. Yeah. So like, give me gameplay, give me a, a cutscene. Don't mash them together because it's boring. Yeah, it's a good one. I think we should probably do one more each, and then maybe right, okay. wrap it up there. Because we could go on for a while. Destiny became the main topic for a while. <laughs> My, I'd say, yeah, mine are kind of like just PvP centric. Um, 
not playing objectives in objective based game modes is mm -hmm. so annoying because if you if you feel uh, sorry if it feels like if you don't do it it's not going to get done like battlefront 2 is probably the the most recent one like that um galactic assault is purely based on objectives if you have to take down a vehicle or if you have to control the zones or something like that it's so noticeable that people just want to go in there get kills or play as the hero spam the hero die constantly over and over if you just play as a team on the point or on what you have to do the objective it's just it's it's so much easier so much quicker it flows much more a 20 minute game turns into a 10 minute game and the fluidity is so nice same with Destiny when you're playing Iron Banner or Control and nobody's capping zones or people are just I think Destiny's playing... slightly different because Destiny's um whatever you want to call it the game what what do you call it? Iron Banner Control no the the objectives Objective. brain fart the objectives in Destiny are they don't really matter for the most part because it's just glorif you... it's just glorified team deathmatch at the end of the day. The only one yeah. that was actually objective was zone control, and that's no longer a thing. If it was a bigger scale, yeah, it would have more of an impact. But just for example, like if if you're playing zones, mm -hmm. and if if two people on the opposite team are just going for kills and they are absolutely rinsing your whole team, you can still win based on you simply playing the objective. And I wish they kind of harpen down on that a little bit more like the dome iron banner and the, the zone gives you the lockout and stuff like that but yeah mainly in bigger kind of pvp games or bigger kind of scale it's um yeah it's really annoying because it just goes on forever and ever i think destiny could and uh, i will go back to fucking destiny again but they could increase <laughs> that view so if you're within a certain distance of the zone you get extra points but if you're nowhere near a zone just getting kills you shouldn't get yeah, the benefits because like, you're just slaying yeah. them whereas if you're actually controlling the zone and getting kills near a zone to keep control of the, the game's called control Give it's you not an called incentive. capture yeah. <laughs> it's not capture the zones it's control the zones so yeah yeah no uh, it's 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 annoying but like that if if you're not the one that's sitting on B or around B yeah. you're just gonna get steamrolled it's you know? something way more noticeable if you're playing solo as well like if you're <laughs> yes. in a team of three or four people you just kind of just naturally do it. Yeah. But if you're in a just playing by yourself with full mercenary teams, yeah, it can be headless Tough. chickens. Yep. Well, that's my last one. Nothing really basically, annoys me in PvP. Basically, Dill hates PvP. Game. Yeah. Every, but see, that's the thing. I feel like you're everyone's a little bit more heightened in PvP because... Yeah. There's something on the line. I know PvE with raids and stuff like that there is, but I, yeah, I just think PvP everyone's a little bit tetchy. <laughs> it's competition. Brings out the work. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I think a big thing though for it if people are getting tetchy, that if something goes against you, you get killed because of the lag or because of something stupid happened or he used a certain ability or she used a certain ability. Have your moment, <laughs> have your moment, and move on. Yes, because but that's another pet peeve that I didn't is. mention. It's nobody wants to listen to you give out for 20 minutes on something that happened three hours ago. ago. Yeah, exactly. Have your moment it's, and move the fuck on. It's not enjoyable to be in the presence of that when you're trying to play a PvP game as well. <laughs> But anyway, that's I, I've used up my my. Here's allowance. Stephen going to create another twenty minute conversation. I've, so I've, in Destiny in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> so many I want to talk about. And I can't. I don't. Right. Here's what we'll do, Stephen. I've got one. I've really only got one more here. So I'll do my one, and then we can. Um, I'll just name. Quick. We can quick fire your ones. Mine won't take long. Something that's really bugging me lately. And it 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 was kind of. So I noticed when the Outriders demo came out, because I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's criticizing one game for doing something, and then praising another game when it does the exact same fucking thing. So, for example, people complain when doing Destiny. 
I didn't get the thing I wanted. I didn't get this gun. The drop rates are too low. And then when they were playing the Outriders demo, it was, this loot feels rare. This is really great. I love this feeling of the loot being rare. It's like, it's the same commentary <laughs> from, about in similar games from different... It's like, you're criticizing one game for something and then turn around and praising another game yeah. for the exact same thing. Because, like, you've got an agenda to put it that way. Now, I've actually got another one there as well. But anyway, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of other ones. And it actually was kind of... It happened when Cyberpunk came out a lot that people were criticizing Cyberpunk for stuff that I'd never seen any game criticized for ever. Like there was obviously those nipples are too yeah. much to the left. What the yeah. fuck? Penis <laughs> penis two isn't big enough. <laughs> but like there was, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head now. But I saw complaints that I'd never seen any game be criticized for because it was an agenda to criticize, and it's the same happens in any game. Like right now, it's. If the agenda is oh Outriders is great because I'm an ambassador for it it's a good game mm. I didn't get that for free I swear but it's because it's new and shiny yeah. and no one's ever dropped it before that's yeah. Yeah. like there was trouble like obviously there was problems with Starpunk I'm not pretending there was no problems with that game especially on older tech it was yeah but I like, just seen things criticized ah, it's just annoying I have, I, think a, when I have a big when spiel you're... written out for Outriders that I'm not going to go through. <laughs> and, and it's really about how the live service genre has fucked over people so many times. They are willing to praise anything that isn't complete steamy trash. Yeah. That they've been... They've been... Where is it? It's that we've, bec we've been... We have become willing to praise something for not being terrible because the live service looter genre has had so many complete failures over the last half a decade. It's almost... That amazing. is my outlook on that football every club game. right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my outlook on every game. I'm willing to give it a chance. But yeah, If it's anyway. not shit, it's just rose-coloured shit or gold shit. Yeah. It's still shit at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, just annoying yeah. when you see... I get you. See, I and, think Square and got their um they learned their lesson from Avengers said, hey, we probably should pay content creators yeah. to tell us good rather than make a good game. Yeah. That's something else that, that bugs the hell out of me when people are like, Oh, this person said this game is great. They're an ambassador for the game. Of course they said it was great. It, they did literally contract it to say it's great. Yeah. <laughs> And those kind of deals, I feel, tarnish some games as well, because then, like you said, you're not going to take it at face value because yeah, exactly. they are getting a pocket from it. And that's always going to be brought up mm -hmm. in a discussion about X person saying it about X game rather than complimenting it, you know, or them be, be complimenting on top of it being a good delivery of whatever it is. That kind of ties in a little bit nicely into one of my biggest pet peeves. <laughs> Live service games. <laughs> Part two. Are you talk about your pet peeve? Hmm? Are you done talking about your pet peeve? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I've got a big spiel written up there, but it doesn't matter. It's basically just saying that. Um, stop praising something for being mediocre. Mediocre does not equal good. Yeah. And that crosses oh i just thought of another pet hate <laughs> i just thought of another pet hate go on steven i let you talk no, what? go on that everyone thinks they're a fucking critic in 2021 moving on <laughs> hey look at what my next topic is <laughs> my big, one of my biggest pets hates is the internet <laughs> <laughs> this is a broad a topic <laughs> do you remember when we were kids and you'd buy a game play it and enjoy it well now you have streamers, content creators, subreddits, critics, uh, social media telling you why your opinion is shit, why you should hate that game, why you're wrong, and half of the lobby telling you what your mother was up to last night. Like, I fucking hate the internet. All like, you had was the back leaflet of the, of the game and a magazine article that you probably would have seen or not seen. Like, to, to think about it, like, if I was to tweet out saying oh you know this is a great game or whatever someone in my timeline will come and go well that's wrong because that game's shit and <laughs> such a really shit and there's a whole subreddit that, and i'm like i just don't share my opinions on it anymore so 
I enjoy the game. I don't care what you think. I like it. And that ties into another pet hate, which is shaming players or games. They're like, you still play that game? That's yeah. dead game. Dead. Like, dead to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there are two massive pet hates that I have is just the unnecessary criticism. People on else. the internet. Mm. Yeah. Toxicity on it. Um, just because you have a keyboard doesn't mean you have to become a warrior. And even like, especially certain developers making games like yes. for example ubisoft and phoenix rising if you played phoenix rising and didn't know who the developer was mm-hmm. you wouldn't put ubisoft and them together but because they've had such bad experiences in the past couple of years mm-hmm. that they fall under that category of what are you playing their game for yeah you know 100 percent. and unfortunately a- cd project red are gonna become one of those developers yeah what are you playing that game for? Whereas five years ago, well, five five months ago, six months it ago, was yeah. best developers in the world. Yeah. Woosha. Woosha. Um, yeah, like it's, it's it, it is it is really annoying because then it's the same with film critics and TVs and stuff like that. It steers you in a direction that you don't not necessarily want to go in and you're kind of second guessing your choices then rather than just enjoying something for what it is one know? thing i find that's coming off the topic of the internet is that there's no middle ground there's no it's this or it's that yeah i'm enjoying this it's either it's amazing or it's shit and there's nowhere yeah there's nowhere in the middle and it's the same fucking you're po- talking about football a second ago Dil. it's never yeah he's a good player but he doesn't play for my team so i don't like him bruno fernandez fabulous footballer but he doesn't play for Liverpool, so he's a rat bastard who I fucking can't stand. <laughs> but I can still appreciate he's an excellent footballer. Whereas the internet tells you, oh no, he's only a stat merchant. He's, he, yeah. he's propped up by goals and a... Fuck off, man. And so, same with, like, like exactly what like I said, not, not everything has to be groundbreaking. Hmm. Like, you can play something and enjoy it. It doesn't have to be a genre-defining or a fucking... What are games specific... supposed to be? Like, what's the point of a game? To enjoyable to yeah. enjoy it just enjoy it and shut your goddamn mouth and you don't have to be the best person to ever play that game either no no to no. enjoy it <laughs> fuck you yeah no. <laughs> yeah it's really yeah, a lot of other ones that are like more game specific weapon durability fuck weapon durability yeah it's kind of dumb I like healing items bloodborne i'm looking at you fuck that system 30 fps now Fuck 30 a second. It's I don't know why. Uh, why is 30 FPS? Like, Outriders, going back to it again, it's coming out in a few weeks. It's cutscenes at 30 FPS on PC. Why? Mm. Why? Like, come on. We, That's Call where of, they should Call of Duty moved, because yeah, Call of Duty moved yeah. on to 60 FPS 10, 12 years ago. Why are we still on 30 FPS for anything? It's not more cinematic. It doesn't look better. It looks trash. Stop it. Well, could the human, look better. The human eye can't see below 24 <laughs> frames a second. Yeah. Um, this is this is definitely something I have, and I don't know if you two have this, but games that don't give you more than one save file or force you to constantly overwrite your same file. I hate that. I That's hate still a that. thing? Yeah, in some games, like like in the Dark Souls series. Yeah, like you can true, only have... actually, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's a lot yeah. of games more like one save file and i just get anxiety when i'm saving like well what if i miss something what if i need to go back and do this see as someone the way i play i wouldn't that wouldn't ever kind of cross my kind of anything like i just uh, i have my one save and i'm like i know it's auto saving but i'm still gonna make one save i just i don't go back on things but that's just how i play save but it's the idea of when i know i'm coming up to a juncture and something i'm like uh, I might need to go back and grind yeah. this a bit. Yeah. Something. You're and just like... saying that because you had to play through Dark Souls. Uh, sorry, Demon Souls, like three times for your platinum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, keep going, Steven. Uh, Any more? Uh, mapping multiple inputs to one button. Hold X to jump, but also press X to pick up item. Fuck I gosh. have a <laughs> counterpoint to that right now. Go on. Don't do it by default. But allow me to do it in certain situations, such as G in Destiny for me, 
is using my finisher. But it was also Stasis Breakout. They have now remapped Stasis Breakout to V. I don't want Stasis Breakout on V because I've mm. already developed the muscle memory to have it on G. It's and I've also I also have my quest tabs on C. So anytime I try to do Stasis Breakout, I hit my fucking quest tab. Yeah, no, this is this is specific to Final Fantasy Fifteen, where oh yeah, I uh, I didn't even look at that for PC M and K because yeah. I look I took one look and went nope, plug in a controller. But even on controller, it has it's, it's X. Bad. Yeah. You pick up an item, you have to hold X. Yeah, and bad. it just um. In comparison, in comparison yeah. to Final Fantasy Seven Remake, which it, the buttons were perfect for that. Yeah, um, escort missions and stupid AI. Resident Evil 4, if you played it with Ashley. That was awful. Oh my goodness. I can hate them. Um, developers overhyping games, microtransactions, forced matchmaking. Final Fantasy 14 does this, and I hate it. You get you get through the story, and then you do a dungeon. And if you don't do the dungeon with three to six other people, you can't progress in the story. Yeah. I never did it. I was a tank, didn't know how to play tank, got screamed at for the whole dungeon, and left it for four years. <laughs> and didn't but like i hate that just coming out of nowhere and another one that i have that uh is very specific to me is third person shooters i hate them yeah i'm not a they, fan of third person shooters either what's the point of playing a shooter game if the angle you're shooting from is from luke four stories away like <laughs> i just want to gun. speaking of luke battlefront 2 is a good third person shooter <laughs> But yeah, what, what like in 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 that game specifically, you have the option to go first person, but it feels like you're at a hindrance if you play at first person because yeah, it's made. Yeah. As you can third see person. more as in third person. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, and, oh, my last one is uh, open world games. I really don't like them. Too much to do, too much clutter takes away so from the much. narrative. Even if they say it's optional, let's face it, the majority of the game is side quests and fetch quests and everything. Yes. And that's... Sorry, Kev, go on. I think third-person games for the last 10 to 12 years... Sorry, third-person? Open-world games, sorry. For the last 10 to 12 years, they focused on, let's make it bigger. Yeah. Bigger isn't always better. Make no. it denser. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of open world games going over the next few years that they can now build up. They have the technology to make it dense. And that's where we'll see open world games going. So it won't be walk 500 miles to fetch this for me and then walk 500 miles back. And I know like that's why I know they they, they say it's optionable. It's optionable. Yeah, it's optional. To do, <laughs> I couldn't get there. It's optional to do side quests and stuff like that. But then, when some of the side quests tie into the main story, you kind of feel like you're missing out on that. Whereas, and I know it's like it's like we're sponsored by fucking Phoenix Rising. I did. That's why I enjoy that because you have your five or six zones. You you do your main story in that zone, and then you move on to the next zone. If you want to do the little kind of mini dungeons, you can do them, but they're just complements to the story rather than tying into it and it's not it's one of those if i want to log on for an hour or two i can clear a whole whole area if i wanted rather yeah. than i have to play this for 30 hours minimal you know yeah i'm the same especially with like the, the witcher I, I tried to play it through recently as well and it's just it's so convoluted with side quests and it's massive and like kev said just because something's massive doesn't necessarily mean it's good <laughs> I think the, the drawback for them is the mode of transport, which yeah. the gets away with it because it's the fast travels fine. But if you look at GTA or Cyberpunk or any open world game where you have a car, you can Freeze. get from you can get from one side of the map to the other in pretty short amount of time. Whereas if you look at The Witcher, if you want to go or Skyrim. To get from one end of the map to the other on a horseback, it's like yeah, auto run, go put the kettle on. Remember Assassin's Creed? I think it was the first one. Like <laughs> it, it was literally twenty full minutes to get from one area to the next. I think it might have been the second one. I think the, the first one. one, the first one was um, it had like kind of zones where you'd leave 
I don't know, I can't remember where it was, but you'd leave Bethlehem and then it'd fast travel you to somewhere yeah, else in the next area. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's just that it's what, Stephen? It, I think in number two, you went to Florence and all the difference, yeah. like Italian town. It might not have been two, then it might have been further along. I know what you're saying, though, Dale. Yeah, it yeah. was. It got too sprawly and go here. It turns. Climb, it turns the, it off. climb the building. Do the zone thing, the spinny thing. Mm. Do the eagle jump. Rinse and repeat for the next 40 hours. Yeah. So Whereas, that's like, in. In Phoenix, I've clocked over 30 hours so far, and it doesn't feel like it because I'm enjoying my process the way I'm playing it. I know I could do it in 20 hours to finish the whole story if I wanted, but I don't feel like it's it's like when you sit down to play a new game. I feel like I have to beeline through the story because that's the content I want, just the main kind of grip on the quest. Um, But... Yeah, with your open world RPGs, there's just so much going on, and you feel like you haven't even scratched the surface, and you've played thirty hours, <laughs> which I... is great if it's the only game you're ever going to play for the next fucking two or three years. But nowadays, that doesn't that doesn't happen. <laughs> I have one more specific thing, the pet peeve that was coming from the Pokemon talk. And it's not just Pokemon, it extends to other games. The Last of Us 2 being one that I can think of off the top of my head. Really unrelatable characters. <laughs> and it was in Sun and Moon, and it's in Sword and Shield. The NPCs are just, you just they're not relatable. And it was the same in the first half of, Assass- of The Last of Us 2. Up until the changeover in characters. When you're playing as Ellie, the characters just are so unrelatable. For me, anyway. Yeah. That's for me. Um, and I, know that's... I don't know about you, but I've always felt like a Midwest cowboy living in a snowy village. <laughs> and the same in, like, in Pokemon Sun, Moon, How, whatever. Such an annoying fucking character. In Sword and Shield, isn't it? the characters yeah. were just not relatable at all. Or Hop. I was just, mm-hmm. Hop. Hop was in hop. Sword and Shield. Jeez. He's just not relatable. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Coming, I think from, that kinda, coming from oh, your rival in blue and yellow and red, which was fucking great. The rival was yeah. great. Anyway. It's just that overly kind, um, flamboyant character that's like, I don't want to be your enemy, but I have to be your enemy, but we're going to be friends after this fight, aren't we? <laughs> Make Pokemon for adults, please. Thanks. I want you to kick me in the nuts and then fight me. <laughs> And I'll shake my hand after. <laughs> I've got a couple of pieces of news there that people are already aware of. Square Enix have announced them. Um, their Square Enix con. <laughs> Square Enix presents Thingy Majigger. It's on 18th of March, which is next Thursday, 5 p.m. our time. There's not really out there that I'm that interested in, unfortunately, because there's no Final Fantasy. Um. Xbox is officially the daddy of Bethesda. Yay. We all knew it was coming, but it's official. Mm. Um, yeah. it was Fallout a... 77 confirmed. Yeah, I think that was the biggest part of the news this week, really, was Bethesda finally being finalized. Like, there's one, for example, just on Bethesda. Like, Fallout, how tarnished is that franchise because of 76? Like, because of live service. Like, could you imagine their next iteration? They just brought out not even like Fallout Four or Fallout Three. Like, if they just brought out like a a story one, like The Last of Us, kind of in that environment, could work. Could work. Could not work. But can't get any worse I think, because they've lost so much player base. I think with Bethesda over the last decade, um, and it's kind of highlighted by the acquisition by Microsoft. Bethesda had no money. <laughs> so yeah. they were trying to find ways to generate revenue. Consistent, yeah. To increase their revenue to keep developing games. And that's where Fallout 76 came along. It was there to, as a money grab, shameless, yeah. to try and bring back in some of that money. And with Microsoft now owning Zenimax and Bethesda, Hopefully we see the death of those shitty 
live service microtransaction bullshit that have yeah. plagued otherwise spectacular Bethesda games. Bethesda make great games. Like they've always made the idea that Fallout 76 should have worked. In theory yeah. it was the perfect thing. In theory it, on paper it was amazing. But because of what it was and because it was there to launch Fallout first, whatever it's fucking called, to make money and that was it just to sell shit in their store. It didn't work, and it's never gonna. Yeah. So hopefully now we can go back to Bethesda just making good games because Microsoft are gargantuan. So hopefully, Bethesda good. Hmm? Bethesda good. Hopefully, the next few years are gonna be a Bethesda for them as a company. I think that's a natural place to just end this show. For <laughs> If anyone's not aware, Final Fantasy VII Remake is free on PlayStation Plus. If you've been living under a rock, go get it. Go play it. Also, um, the other game that's up on PlayStation was Darkness, Remnant from the Ashes. Oh, whatever. Remnant from the Ashes. That was supposed to be really also, good, actually. Yeah, I've heard great things. That's also free on PlayStation Plus. Go get those because they're both spectacular games. I can vouch for Final Fantasy, but I've heard really good things about Remnants. Yes. Anyway. I'm actually going to add that to my PS Plus now. It's worth it. Just add it. Might yeah. as well. Only bad thing Three. about Final Fantasy VII Remake is you don't get the upgrade to PS5 when that comes out because they want you to spend money. But yeah, you can play the game on PS4 for free. GG. Also, oh, Ratchet and Clank is free as well, actually, forever. For and yeah. If you add it to your library, you don't have to have PlayStation Plus. You can just add it to your library. To play free game. Time. Free game. Nice. Yeah. Why not? I wish Nintendo had a model like that for the Switch. It'd be so good. Just monthly kind of monthly games. Because mm. it, it does, it, it encourages you to explore titles that you necessarily wouldn't pay for. I'm not saying that that's, that's a, a good thing. Like if you like something to support it, but mm -hmm. just to take a chance on a different genre okay. that you wouldn't Abba, necessarily play. <laughs> but yeah, just to, no, just to dip your foot in different different genres or sub-genres to, to games, you know? And I think S Switch alone has so many different varieties. Like, it goes from mobile game level to massive fucking MMOs. Like, there's so much in between that just doesn't get looked at. Still need a Switch Pro. Still can't yep. wait for that. 4K handheld. Can't wait for it to be official. Please. I know. I just apparently, hope it's Apparently, Apparently, they're announced. only going to be making a million of or what's it a million of them worldwide for launch so um good luck at oh here them. we go again <laughs> oh it's gonna be way worse ps5 gpus way worse get in line fucking hell yeah i think we should probably wrap that up there yeah yep. it's a good conversation the pokemon picking was fun steven really went in steven's been sitting at home all week with these pet peeves steven got I, a lot off his chest today he did i only had freedom up until about four o'clock today and it was the weapon durability one that ticked me off it's like oh yeah that one and then that turned from... me off breath of the wild man completely yeah, yeah. spiraled from it's there, groundbreaking man. though it never happened in a game before groundbreaking mm. yeah and steven wasted his legendary in the fucking second pick like no foreplay with you just straight to the jugular Steven was trying to keep in, in context to the, the types that were going on. <laughs> Eventually. Horny on. Horny on first. Let's go. Yeah, proud, boy. So proud, so proud of you. Right. When do you wrap it up there? Steven, take it away. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you're still here, we appreciate your support. And we will see you next week when we decide what topics we're doing. And until then, stay safe, take care, and... I thought you were going to say stasis for a second there. <laughs> stasis. See you next week. Bye. You know who you are. Lord of the Rings is amazing. Bye.